I'm Vanessa Canby and I'm here with Kojo North. You have a YouTube channel, you've built this amazing house here, you're building a student hostel right. and you're awesome. also doing so many things here. You've moved <laughs> from London to Ghana. Why did you decide to come to Ghana? It was time. It really just was time for myself. Born and raised in Europe, lived a good life over there. I don't have any problems with it, but at some point I recognised that there were parts of me that I have never really explored. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to the village of my parents. I haven't learnt the local language of Chui. And I just thought I want to be a bit more ingrained. And, you know, I have the benefit and the privilege of maybe not having a real rooted connection to Europe, children or big, big assets and stuff like that. So I thought right now was the time for me to come here and really figure out who I am, as well as the business opportunities. You know, they're not too bad either. So. Amazing. So when was it that you made that decision? I mean, physically or mentally, because... <laughs> well, I guess, I guess the mental must have come right. first. And then how long from that mental decision to actually making the move? Honestly, it, it was a really weird process because I was with some friends in the UK, in Amsterdam. We were thinking about some business ventures that we wanted to go down on. And they made a lot of sense on paper. We worked on a business plan. We were doing like a five-year forecast. And I was then try trying to do a bit of imagination. Five years from now, if the, everything goes successfully, will I be happy? And I, I, I didn't feel like I would be, and that was two years ago. So at that point, I realized there's a problem because if I'm literally working towards and creating a plan and I'm trying to imagine if I get to that end of that plan and it's a success, will I be happy? And the answer was, I don't know. So I thought I needed to change something. So mm. that was two years ago. Okay. But then there was still like the physical aspect of it. Like, can I actually do it? Where would I live? Where will I stay? What will I do? Mm -hmm. um, so then over the last two years, I've sort of been trying to think about that, trying to work that out a bit more and more and more. But it was November of, of 21 where I actually said, OK, this is it. One way ticket. And here wow. I am. And are your parents in the UK? That's right. And so well, between. So my dad is in the UK. Uh, I've got a sister in the Netherlands. So I'm born in Amsterdam, lived there for the past six years. OK. Uh, so I'm half Dutch, half English is the, is the connection oh, right. there. Interesting. And my mother is sometimes in Kumasi, sometimes in the UK. So it's kind of. Uh, so what did they think when you were like, I'm actually thinking about moving to Ghana? Wow, well, well, damn. They thought I was mad. <laughs> they thought I was mad. And I mean, especially from my parents, because it's kind of a mind trip if you think about it. They were born and raised here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. They suffered and made a lot of things happen to come to Europe to give myself and my sister a better life. Just for me, 20 or 30 years later, to, to come back basically to the roots, right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost as if I'm backpedaling the work that they've already done. Yeah. And they didn't get it. Mm -hmm. But they also hadn't really seen the evolution of Ghana over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. They haven't seen that Ghana isn't the Ghana that they once knew. Mm -hmm. Accra over the last 15 years, you know, has it's changed so, has so, changed much, so yeah. much. And now they're also starting to see that because of people like yourself, oh, Wada, maybe. and you know, you guys are showing a different version of Ghana that even a lot of Ghanaians who maybe left here 20 years ago or so mm -hmm. haven't recognized. And I know there's some problems to that, your most recent video, the gentrification and things. Yeah. But I do think the fears that my parents had about me coming here have sort of been dismissed mm -hmm. because they realize now that this is where it's at. Yeah, you know? like this Ghana, is Africa is the future, Absolutely. literally. Absolutely. I mean, my dad was exactly the same. When I told him, he was just like, what? Right. Yeah, the same thing. Like, I came here, you know, for you guys, basically. Right. And now you and your sister want to move back right. to Ghana. Like, and it wasn't easy, right? Because mm -hmm. the way in which we've come, we've come with the knowledge we've got. Yeah, and perhaps privilege. From certain like, privileges, yeah. so it's cool. But they made this huge journey to do what they did for us, for us to just say, hey, we're going back over there. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah that's how it is though. Interesting. Okay, so <laughs> this house, what is the story behind it? It looks amazing. Like the plot is huge, yes. honestly. And you were telling me there was like a little bit of drama going on. As there always is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would be really, really amazed if someone can buy land here in Ghana and not have some type of dispute with someone. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a random guy on the street that says I've laid a claim to this. But yeah, so this was bought by my family 20 years ago, this land. Mm -hmm. And this whole entire area was literally just oh, land. Good. Like this whole entire area. I mean, not just this plot, as in there was nothing here oh, all wow. around. So when my parents bought this 20 years ago, 
there was no real intention with it. Um, in today's value, we're talking about 4,000 CDs. So wow. We're talking so about it was less, like really it was like four or 500 cheap. pounds. Oh my gosh, amazing. 20 years ago, right? Back then, land, it was so like easy to come by, even in Accra, and easily gone. Like people talk about Absolutely. buying land for nothing. Absolutely. Now it's like at least $250,000. It's like crazy. Absolutely. So that's why I also feel like us and our generation, we also have to make those steps for like the next generation. Absolutely. You know, I can't, my kids can't be looking back like, mom, why didn't you buy land <laughs> back then? And now it's like a million dollars. Yeah, no, and I mean, and that's just how it goes, right? The economic mm -hmm. growth. And I always say, if you think about the US or certain places in central London and you wonder why, oh, I wish I could have bought land over there a hundred years ago, that is Africa today, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. just in the last 20 years, this, the valuation of this plot alone, 300% plus. Amazing. Like, you know, I don't want to give too many numbers <laughs> yeah. away, but yeah, so that was the story. So 20 years ago, they bought the land and then it was supposed to be a family home. Mm -hmm. But over the 20 years or so, my parents weren't able to, to do much with it, to finish it. You know, they were taking care of my sister and I. And I've come here now with, with my weird ideas and I feel like I'm going to just complete the, complete the process. Um, and I do want to turn it into a bit of a event space. I do want to make it a communal space and I want the local area to, to maybe benefit. benefit from this oh, year. Nice. When did your parents start building the house? So the land was bought in the year of 2000. Construction started in 2004. Okay. So as you can see, it's been a very slow process, right? Mm -hmm. It's been an extremely slow process and that's just a capital issue yeah um and they've been in europe like raising two kids first generation africans like it wasn't easy for them and uh, sometimes i want to shed a tear when i look at it and i wish that it was all ready and all good they've given us enough to work with right mm -hmm. but even like this is a <laughs> lot you know yeah um to to sort of hand down to their kids this is amazing absolutely and i'm and i'm so proud of them you know mm -hmm. i'm always hating on them like on the side <laughs> But, you know, I, I want them to know, mum and dad, I'm very proud of you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> so have they got it to this stage or have you taken over at some point? Uh, so there's been a transition over the last few years. Um, so we are reconstructing some things which I'm 100% involved in. Oh, right, okay. But yeah, at some point the, the baton was handed over about oh, two years ago. Oh, nice. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe you can show me around. Absolutely. Should we should is? we come in from the main okay, entrance? Yeah. yeah, sorry, there's no doors. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm that's like, not on you. <laughs> that's not on you. So, the middle sort of post, this mm -hmm. is the main entrance. This is where the main door is going okay, to be. Nice. As you come in, it's an open space, and this is going to be the main living room. Very where nice. you just walked into is going to be sort of a waiting room. Okay. I don't know who we think we are, but we need a waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the waiting room, and over here, it's sort of an indoor garden. Oh, I love that. Uh, it's like a theme. courtyard type. So my mother is a chef. Uh, oh, she nice. loves food. She loves cooking. So this is where we're going to grow a few herbs and whatever else. So that's oh, what I this really is going like to that. be. Oh. But as you can see, it doesn't look too great right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it'll get there. I can't wait to like come back when it's all done and you can show absolutely. the Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. So this is dining room, so a okay. dining space. Nice. Naturally, then you can imagine this is the kitchen. Oh, yeah. This is where the kitchen's going to be. And I'm really big on trying to get more open. More natural yeah, light. exactly. So I'm, I'm going to be breaking quite a lot of the walls. Oh, right, okay. Um, I think the architectural sort of format has changed as well mm -hmm. over the last 10, 15 years. Um, before, I think it was more so the bigger constructions, yeah. the thicker walls and actually sort of enclosed castle, colonial style buildings. Yeah. But I think the modern era is more so about, hey, let the light in, let the people see, mm -hmm. be a part of the community, not sort of hide yourself away on a mountain hill. Yeah. So I'm, slowly trying to make that transformation happen but money 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 is yeah. <laughs> it's cool. actually massive do you like this it house. yeah it's nice it's big happy to hear it over here it's just a storage and a toilet facility very nice and then we've got two bedrooms downstairs so this is what okay. i meant by it's kind of two separate houses okay um so we've got one bedroom here. This is where our housekeeper stays. So I want to give him that privacy, yeah, like but this is an identical room. Okay. Um, so this would be the bedroom and there you've got the, the bath and, and the toilet. And since you've started to like take over the build, what has that process been like? <laughs> 
it hasn't been easy. I mean, COVID has been a part of that in terms of the fluctuations of raw materials. Oh yeah, the and prices have gone way up, haven't way they? Up. Mm -hmm. way up and it's just so hard to make forecasts it's so hard to figure out well, what have I got and what can I do mm -hmm. because it's literally daily and weekly fluctuations at the moment and then finding the correct laborers finding oh, the correct right. people who you can entrust to actually do the work do the work do the work at the right pace but with the right quality and skill mm. so I've actually got an architect come in in maybe the next hour or two. Oh, right, okay. Uh, and he's from Togo. Like, we found somebody that we think is the guy, and we've had to, from Togo, right? Wow, Not to say, uh, well, no, he's got other projects here in oh, Ghana. Right, okay. But, you know, this is, a lot of people are using him because he's got a credibility that people can trust. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they don't exist in Ghana, but it's just who you know. Yeah. And we happen to have found him. Mm -hmm. So those have been the real challenges, raw material pricing and finding the right people. Okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I've not yet started, but I'll get there. So I'm You'll get taking there. No, these, absolutely. these nuggets of information. So, this is, so is this going to be like open? It is, yeah. Do you want to go upstairs? Okay, yeah, let's, let's do go. it. Yeah. Because you were also mentioning that this area you're going to change into like an art gallery. Type. Absolutely. So as both floors can be used as separate homes, I'm going to start making the top floor more residential for myself. Mm -hmm. But down here, this is a really good open space. Yeah, no, it I, um, really, really is. I was at a, a listening party of some upcoming artists just, just last week, and they, between themselves, were just chatting about December is coming, Halloween is coming, and they want to do events, but they don't have the space. Mm. And the spaces which they can take out, the landlords or the owners, they want to take 60% of the revenue on the night. They want to do this, they want to do that. And I said to them, look, guys, I've got a space. It isn't, you know, the alley bar. It isn't front back it isn't the most beautiful place but if you guys believe in yourselves if you guys have the talent here's a space I, you know, I can help you up let's set up the speakers let's put in the lighting let's make it as good as it can be and why not use this for something for you guys right and mm -hmm. I just want anybody and everybody in the creative space tattoo artists hairdressers if someone has some culinary ideas so my cool. home is yours amazing yeah. great idea because there's not many if any of those spaces Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> recently i saw my sister went to an event and it was like an uncompleted building did you see that event no and it was like as in completely uncompleted like not to this more level uncompleted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how as do you get more uncompleted than this because this <laughs> is just <laughs> it was like like it was completely uncompleted basically okay. the first step of like building Right. They had like an art gallery there. Actually, right. I'll share it with you and you could Please maybe do. like... And I can it copy. Was really I love cool. copying. I'm very good at plagiarising. <laughs> I know that's something you what know. What is it about. called? Steal Like an Artist. I've not read it, but there's a book called Steal Like an Artist. Apparently, it's oh, really good. So brilliant. it's like the same. It's like you see an idea, you make it your own. Oh, brilliant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we check up upstairs yeah, where you're going to make your it. residential area. So are your parents, like, do they have any visions of moving back to Ghana? I mean, I've been hearing it for the last 15 years. Okay. I've been hearing it, Kwejo, we are going back home, but they haven't <laughs> been back in terms of moving permanently, but I think they're now finally getting to a place in life and just an age where they feel like this is where they need to be, you know, mm. for, their, for their elderly years. And mm -hmm. I'm down for that, because okay. I believe I need to be here at my age. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they made it to 60s still in the UK, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's on them. <laughs> I really like it up here as well it's so breezy and open right 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 sean please just be careful yeah this is uh, <laughs> this is my biggest concern as well <laughs> there is everything gonna be cool up here. so we've got four bedrooms first two over here so they're all sort of master rooms they're all built sort of equal although a few of them have balconies okay. but this is pretty much the format oh, nice. bedroom shower bath so each Very room nice. has its own end suite mm, amazing do you like come here regularly? Well, I've just recently got an apartment in Spintex. Yeah. Like I'm in the process of furnishing it now and that's about 20 minutes away from here. Okay. So that I can really start to be more hands on with it. Mm -hmm. um, the project in Kumasi has for the last like, six months taken more of my time, love and attention. So what you. is what is your pro project in Kumasi and is that where your parents are from? Uh, that's where my father is from. Oh, right, so okay. my father is Ashanti from Kumasi. My mother is Ewe from the Volta region. Oh, right. uh, so we've got over there a 60 bedroom hostel. 
Oh, nice. Which we have decided to put there because there are a lot of students from the KNUST and Kwame Krumah mm -hmm. University that just need places to stay. They need rooms. Um, as that university is getting bigger and more popular and more international, there is a real under demand uh, of rooms in terms of the supply there. Mm -hmm. So it just made a lot of sense for us to build that. And for me, again, it's about promoting the creatives, the art spaces that will be in there and the upcoming artists. I don't know if you listen to any of the Kumasi music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Americans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sort of want to be a part of that movement slowly, slowly, <laughs> and maybe a studio there as well. Oh, but but cool. what it is, is a hostel for students. Long term, one year, uh, academic years. So did you build that yourself or is that also with your family? That's a family thing as well. Oh, yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah. And when do you think it's going to be finished? It's, it's in progress because for the next five years, it, there's development going on. Right now building a restaurant um, oh, right. that is on the same plot of land. So that's in process. We've got three floors done, but new floors will come. But it's just a problem of capital and people mm -hmm. like labor. Um, so and, yeah. And then do you think, like, will it be a profitable business? from your projection of well, that? Well, 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 I don't want to say anything to get me into trouble now. <laughs> I hope so, yeah, so it, definitely. I oh, mean, okay. th the aim of it as well is to at least break even, right? Mm -hmm. And then make profit. It's for me, um, in terms of the operational side and the strategy, is that's, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I just see all of that going to my parents, like this is your retirement fund that you never saved for, the pension schemes that you were never enrolled in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure you got that. Oh, right. great. <laughs> what do you do? Like, apart from obviously building this, building the hostel, what else are you up to here? So I'm a tech guy. So that's, I'm in the tech space. Um, I work for a tech startup. Uh, they're based in Wales. Yeah, so that's my day to day. Uh, I work in the AI space, like machine learning, artificial intelligence. Oh, interesting. And I've also just started a tech company here in Ghana. Oh, nice. Um, so the company you work for that's based in Wales, were they okay with you? Uprooting. Yeah, they are. They are, and you know, great bunch of people, and they recognise that I'm not just trying to, you know, join this sort of remote hype and be in different places. I'm here for me. Like, I'm not here because I want to be. My soul wants me mm. here, needs me here, and I honestly felt like if I didn't eventually come to Ghana, that I would walk my way towards potentially depression or something like that, mm -hmm. because as I said you know, everything in Europe was going pretty well and the business plans were making sense and we were getting lots of great proofs of concepts done. So I had no real reason not to be happy about where life was going, but I wasn't happy with mm -hmm. where life Just was going. Just something deep down telling you. I mean, it was the same for me for years. I pretty much, you know, I was like really sad. Like when I when I wasn't working out to come. Really? And like really like deep within my soul, I was just like, I actually can't be here anymore. And Space here, so this wall's gonna break. Uh, oh. So my parents, they really like fish. So this All is right. gonna be an aquarium, actually. Oh, cool. So this wall's gonna get broken, um, which will allow you to, to look into it better. And there's gonna be some type of aquarium or a pond, I'm not too sure yet. It depends on like what actual livestock my family likes. But yeah, this is gonna be, well, I was gonna say a bit of a surprise, but I guess not <laughs> anymore. I really like the curves. Mm. Like, you know how now I feel like everyone builds like basically boxes. Yeah, yeah. I love how Lego this house work. has, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love how this house has like, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. Like there's a style yeah. to the house. The but. influence, so there's a house in Tema, Community 16, mm -hmm. um, which we basically copied. Oh, right, so I wasn't okay. joking downstairs when I said, I'm going to copy whoever. Oh, right, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we basically copied, but we actually spoke to the owner. She's in Amsterdam. Oh, uh, she's okay. Dutch, Dutch Ghanaian. And we like, we just loved the way it looked. Mm -hmm. And we said, yeah, well, you know, we're going to do it anyway. You might as well help us if you like. Did she give you like the plans and stuff? Yeah, so the relationship was built. Um, and I think she was very much actively involved in, in actually us with the space that we had. Oh, amazing. Um, because it's not like next door, right? It's Community 16. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite far away enough that she didn't mind. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, so I didn't want to take credit for the architectural the design, design because yeah. it wasn't us. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this is one of the, the sort of courtyards that we're going to have, maybe an outdoor barbecue space or oh, whatever nice. it might be. But this is pretty much the house. It's just one more room. Oh, amazing. But yeah, this is, this is what we've got going oh, on over here so in Tamar. Oh, thanks so much for showing us. And you said also that you're starting a tech company here. Yes. What is that company? What is that company? So as I said, student hostel in Kumasi. I love to just chat to people. And I was speaking to some of the students 
what are you guys doing? Like, you're a third year student, great. What are you going to be doing next year? What are you going to be doing the year after that? No idea, that's what they said. We're looking for internship opportunities. We're looking for job opportunities. No real idea. I was taking Ubers and Bolts, having natural conversations with these guys. You know, what's your background? Oh, I've got a degree in nanotechnology, or I've got a degree in data science, or I've got a real passion for IT. But they're driving Ubers and Bolts, and you don't have that in Europe. Mm -hmm. Right now, I know it to be true that we in the UK are paying people to get IT qualified so wow. that they can then come to these companies, mostly startups, to produce value. Over here in Ghana, we have 98% of graduates every year take five years until they can find a permanent job. Oh my God. So that the unemployment rate is quite high. And then even if these people do get jobs, they're not necessarily relevant to what they've spent the last three or four years breaking their backs to pay for their education or their family has broken their backs to pay for their education they need these opportunities that are relevant to them mm -hmm. and now the problem in Europe is that you know there's a ton of startups that are growing lots of people have got great ideas apps websites etc but most of these companies cannot afford to pay the graduate salary of a UK employee so I see an obvious problem on the left I see an obvious problem in the right mm -hmm. and I want to sit in the middle so that's what this tech company is going to do is to bridge the gap between the tech talent and the opportunities that are being sought for and sought after in the Europe's in the UK in the Netherlands in Germany and also in the US but mainly in Europe because of the time difference mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that we can try and bridge that sort of need on both sides but I, I really want it to be clear that it's not necessarily the Ghanaians getting an opportunity it's, in my perspective, it's these UK companies, it's these Dutch companies getting an opportunity mm -hmm. to work with real talent that comes outside of, you know, Europe and from Ghana, homegrown, homebred. And these guys can ultimately, with the remote model that COVID has now proven, mm -hmm. you know, even the real big banks have got remote employees. So we know that it works. We know that the time difference is here. As long as I can get a good generator. So when the light <laughs> doesn't work and the electricity <laughs> cuts off, you know, everything stays stable. And that's what this tech company is going to be. So, Such yeah. a great idea. And um, I don't know if you've seen remotely. I yes. interviewed them. So they're working on like a similar model of like the PA system, like having PAs here working for people in like Europe, US and stuff Absolutely. like that. And it seems to really, really work Absolutely. and their companies like flourishing. Absolutely. <laughs> like such a huge opportunity for, for everyone involved basically. Um, and thanks so much Kojo North for coming on my channel. And everyone check out his channel where you share your life. You share some like really interesting insights as well. So for me, the, the reason why I started the channel, because I'm really not this guy like <laughs> it makes me a bit uncomfortable I'm all sweaty and it's not just the sun believe me <laughs> um, for me I realized that there's privilege here I've got a remote opportunity like in terms of a job um, I've got buildings that I'm working on and I've got I suppose the character to be able to feel like I can come here and I'm learning a lot like I said you know in terms of my soul wants me to be here learning where my family comes from and all those sort of things I know I'm not the only member of the diaspora that feels that way. Mm -hmm. I've received so many emails from kids in London, in Germany, in the Netherlands that are saying, hey, I would like to come to Ghana or to Nigeria, wherever my ancestral home is, but I don't think I can realistically do that right now. And a lot of those limitations are just excuses, but for some of them, maybe they've got a family member that they look after or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. I think for those guys, that is why I've started my Kojo North channel so that they can at least see a little bit more about the alternative lifestyle. Because I do think a lot of people come here from the diaspora and they do open a very specific type of business within Accra. Mm -hmm. But there's Kumasi, there's Tamale, there's Cape Coast, there's creative things that you can do, but there's also the tech related things that you can do. So I want to showcase a bit more of an alternative journey. Mm -hmm. into Ghana so that people can see that and feel like, hey, if I resonate with this guy, if there's any similarities, then I can do it too. Mm -hmm. um, because I also need all the support I can get. So. That inspirational <laughs> character there for everyone. I don't know about that, but yeah, <laughs> <No>. that's me. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Kojo North's channel, subscribe to my channel and see you later. Bye.